Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you three really important tips to help you nail your next UX whiteboard interview. I'm also going to share my experiences of what happened in my past interviews. For those of you who don't know me yet, hello, my name is Sui and I'm a UX designer at Google and I'm very happy to meet you here. I want to make today's video because one of the most requested one-on-ones I have done in the past was tackling UX whiteboard interviews. A whiteboard exercise is a design challenge that you complete in front of an interviewing team within a certain amount of time, usually 30 minutes to an hour, but there can be exceptions. So for example, in the Netflix interviews and interviews with other companies, I remember they could be an hour and a half. In a whiteboard session, interviewers give candidates a design challenge prompt, and the candidate goes about defining solutions and talking about their thought process. In my first video talking about overview of UX interview processes, I mentioned that um, based on my very recent interview experiences, I noticed that a whiteboard exercise is becoming more and more popular these days because it is a very efficient and effective way for companies to evaluate candidates' design thinking and processes. A lot of companies are replacing a take-home exercise with a whiteboard exercise because not everybody has the time to spend a full week to to complete a take-home exercise, whereas a short whiteboard exercise could be fair to everybody. But on the other side, a lot of candidates think a whiteboard exercise is way more challenging than a take-home exercise because you're put on the spot to solve a very vague problem within a very short amount of time. And usually interviewers would intentionally leave the prompt as vague as possible to test out candidates' ability to navigate ambiguity. And candidates would have no idea of what a prompt is until the moment the interview starts. A lot of mentees mentioned to me that they felt a whiteboard exercise was the most intimidating one among all UX interviews. For portfolio presentation and behavioral interviews, you could practice really hard to prepare for them, but for a whiteboard exercise, you just have no idea of what to expect. Honestly, whiteboard exercises used to be my biggest fear during interviews as well. In the past, whenever I heard that a whiteboard exercise was part of the interview process, I was like, oh my god, it's that one again. But after doing a lot of whiteboard interviews, I then realized that I was scared of it because I didn't fully understand what the interviewer was looking for. I was worried about how to come up with the right solution using a framework I created before a UX interview. Um, but the reality was that interviewers, they do not really expect you to come up with the right solution in a whiteboard design interview because the interview is so short. Using a framework in a whiteboard session, I would say yes and no. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about what exactly are interviewers looking for in a whiteboard interview and how to ace your next whiteboard exercise. What I want you to take away from this video are three tips that I think are three of the most important secrets of passing this round based on my personal interview experiences. I did a free one on one giveaway in the last video and the winner was already announced in a pinned comment in the last video. A huge congrats to the winner! From the title of this video, you probably know that I am hosting another free one on one giveaway today. I'll pick one winner to do a free whiteboard exercise with me together. In a session, we are going to do 30 minutes of whiteboard exercise, and then I'll share personalized advice on how to improve your whiteboard skills based on your performance in the session. The rules for entering this game is the same as last time. You just need to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. I am also offering other one-on-one -on -one career coaching, and today I put a promo code somewhere in the video. Just pay attention to it. If you want to get more interview advice, do a mock interview, or just talk about career development in general, please check out the link in the description box down below and then sign up for a session. How do you stand out in a whiteboard challenge? To understand how to meet or exceed the expectations, let's first talk about the evaluation criteria. Number one, problem definition. How well can you explore a problem space and identify big problems to go after? That's why a lot of problems are intentionally left vague. Number two, collaboration and communication. How well can you communicate your thought process and work closely with your interviewer to solve the problem together? 
Number three, interaction design knowledge. How well can you create reasonable design patterns and make trade-offs in different solutions? Number four, idea generation. How quickly can you explore different design solutions and identify the best one to develop further? Always keep in mind what the interviewer is looking for is going to help you prepare this round in the right way. Don't worry about what the prompt is going to be and don't struggle to find the right solution in a whiteboard interview. They are not important in helping you pass in this round. Let's take a look at these three tips for crushing your next whiteboard exercise. Showcase your design thinking instead of presenting a framework. I know there are tons of resources on UX whiteboard frameworks, and in a lot of frameworks, they provide really clear guidance of when to ask what types of questions. I know a lot of frameworks are actually quite similar. Step one, define the problem. Step two, discuss about the user's needs. Step three, talk about the constraints. And finally, brainstorm on the solutions. Blah, blah, blah. Memorizing a framework is easy. As a result, a lot of us would fall into the trap of presenting a predefined framework instead of showcasing our design thinking. In many interviews, a lot of candidates would ask questions for the sake of asking it because it's in the framework. For example, they might ask questions like, what are the constraints of building this product? I think it's a good sign that they think about constraints by asking these questions. A good designer needs to understand how to work under constraints in a real work environment, and this is one of the qualifications companies are looking for from candidates. But when discussing solutions, some candidates would generate solutions that have nothing to do with what they previously covered in the constraints discussions. This is just one example. In some extreme cases, some candidates would come up with solutions that's not relevant at all for users they defined. In that case, it's going to be a big, big red flag for interviewers because taking a user-centric approach is fundamental in UX design. Also, interviewers wanted to evaluate your design thinking by understanding how you leverage information from previous conversation to drive decision making. Simply reading off a framework is not enough to demonstrate the thinking process. Make sure every question you ask, every step you talk about in your process serves its purpose. Every problem is unique and requires a different approach. So ask questions that you think would help you to better define the problem and understand the users. And then justify your design solutions using the points you and your interviewers have previously discussed to help the interviewer understand how you come up with these ideas. You can use connecting sentences to sew the reasons together to guide the interviewer follow along your thinking process. For example, I could say, I like to proceed with solution A because of the limited tech resources we previously talked about. Under this tech constraints, I think solution A would make the most sense because it requires the minimum tech efforts. Speak out loud as you work through the problem. I know this can be quite difficult um, because even if you just work in silo to solve a big problem is already pretty hard. So how can we better juggle both tackling a challenge and communicating our ideas in a very clear way so that interviewers understand how we think? My best advice is to practice with another person. Speak out loud is a very useful skill, not just for UX interviews, but also for real work. For folks who's currently working, uh, whenever you are brainstorming or discussing ideas with the stakeholders like a product manager, speaking out loud your thoughts while sketching on a whiteboard is going to help your colleague easily understand what's on your mind. For those of you who don't have a colleague to practice with, you could find a friend or anybody you know to mock a whiteboard exercise. As you practice with another person, you'll be surprised by the level of details you will need to communicate to the other person in order to help them understand your ideas. A lot of decisions might seem very straightforward to us. For example, when creating wireframe solutions, in some cases we create a discovery page and then we put a nav bar on top and then a search bar. But without hearing any explanations from you for why you are making these decisions, interviewers might ask questions like, why you need a discovery page here? Why you put a nav bar on the top? And why does the screen need a search bar? Even if they don't ask you anything, without hearing your reasons for the design choices, they would still find it very difficult to evaluate your design skills. 
like a framework, anybody can easily memorize and duplicate the designs of some screens. Your justifications for why you are making such design decisions is going to help you stand out and better communicate your design knowledge with interviewers. Lead the conversation. There are two things I want to emphasize here. The first thing is that, different from doing a presentation, you want to engage the interviewer by keeping the interview conversational. But keeping it conversational doesn't mean you have to do a Q&A style all the way from the beginning of an interview to the end. You don't need to confirm every single detail with the interviewer. For example, you don't need to always ask, shall we put a component here versus there? Because there is a boundary between being capable of defining a strategy to help a team navigate ambiguity versus relying too much on guidance. So the second thing I want to emphasize here is that I encourage you to take the lead in the conversation and ask for feedback when collaboration is very necessary to help push the exercise forward. There are always a lot of things undefined in real work, so companies are looking forward to hiring designers who knows how to tackle ambiguity and collaboratively develop an effective action plan with the team. In a whiteboard interview, without knowing anything about this prompt, it makes perfect sense to follow up with questions to learn more about the context. But asking what shall we do in every step is not going to help you demonstrate your strategic thinking. Take the lead in the conversation whenever you feel appropriate. Once you have sufficient knowledge to proceed in the exercise, communicate to your interviewer that you have collected enough information you need and this is what you are going to do next. For example, there's limited time in an interview and you won't have enough time to fully explore all the design options you have presented. So in this case, you can take the lead and talk about what are some solutions you want to prioritize and develop further in this interview and here are the reasons why. Leading conversation is going to help you demonstrate your design process and how you can thrive in the unknowns. Okay, this is what I wanted to share with you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and please give this video a thumb up if you think this video is helpful for you. If you're not selected for the free 101, don't worry, you can use the promo code for a discounted 101 till the end of March. Good luck with the UX whiteboard interview. If you have any questions or topics you are interested in, please feel free to comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!